take two. I'm not even going to tell you what happened to make me cancel take one, but it had fuck all to do with me, okay? It had something to do with the owner of the Shamrock Irish pub, okay? Who's a nutter? Love him to bits, but the boy's mad. Anyway, as I was saying, um, well, as I said on the first take, and I'll repeat it on the second take, I'm here outside the Shamrock Irish pub, okay, on Via del Coliseo, just round the corner from the Coliseum, which is where you'll probably find me nowadays if ever you come to Rome. And I'm not going to go into the ins and whys and buts and ifs, okay, and so on, as to why you find me here and not at the other pub, which I'm not going to mention, okay, for obvious reasons, but um, this is my spot nowadays. Anyway, I'm here today to talk about Arsenal. And, you know, the question is, and the question I've been asking myself, I've been trying to, to you know, I've, I've, I've been looking at it, I've asked myself, is it this, is it that? Okay, right, what is the question? The question, oh, for fuck's sake, okay. I told you they're mad here. Anyway, anyway, anyway. See, 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 madness, madness, that's all it is. Anyway, so basically, as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, um, I can't even remember what I was saying. Yes, the question, the question that, you know, is on my lips and on everyone's lips, to be totally honest, okay? Arsenal, has it been a good season or a bad one? And you know what? I suppose it's a difficult question to answer, to be totally honest. You know, you can look at it either way. Uh, there are contrasting views on it. Um, you know, I watch AFTV. Uh, I follow them religiously. And, you know, I take my hat off to them like I have always done, you know. Big respect to the guys. But I don't know if what their view of it was right or wrong. Uh, let me explain myself. I mean, I heard a lot of them saying that, you know, they're proud of the team. We've done really well this season. And then you've got Yardman. Uh, enough respect to Yardman. He says it how he sees it. And he got into a little bit of, discuss a little bit of a discussion with Robbie. Um, because as far as he was concerned, when he was asked the question... Hold on a second. Did you expect us... Or where did... How did you expect us to do this season? Yardman turned around and said, I expected us to win the league. Now, if you, if you have to be realistic, you know, did we really think we were going to win the league? Okay, we probably, me, myself included, okay, thought top four would be good for us. And, you know, we finished second. So in three years, we've gone from eighth to fifth to second. So if you look at it, okay, that is an improvement. But my question, okay, this is, this is where I find it difficult to say, well, yes, I'm happy with the season. Uh, yes, uh, Manchester City are a machine. Uh, yes, no one can beat Manchester City. We lost both games to them and, you know, that, that, was, that was to be expected. But this is where my problem comes into it. We had the league in our hands. It was ours to lose. And I've said this before, we didn't lose it against Liverpool when we drew against them, even though we were 2-0 up, yeah? Because if you saw that game, Liverpool should have won that game. They should have done, yeah? Okay, we were lucky there. So I suppose you can say that that was a point gain, even though when we were 2-0 up, we could have finished it off, but we didn't. We did not have that. Then we played West Ham. Again, 2-0 up, we draw 2-2. Two -two. If I remember rightly, we were 2-0 up, we draw 2-2. Two -two. Then we play Southampton at home. Southampton, bottom of the league. Bottom of the league. And we draw 3-3 three -three with them. Play Man City, well, 
I mean, that was a done deal. I knew we was going to get spanked. Okay, it was 4-1. Could have been 5 or 6. Ramsdale did a couple of great saves. The main one was against uh, Haaland when it was one-on-one. -on -one, okay, but the result panned out exactly how I expected it to pan out. We play Newcastle away. Newcastle have only lost one game before us at home all season. Only one. So we knew that was going to be a hard game, yeah? We beat them 2-0. I hope I'm remembering my, my scores right. I haven't gone back to, you know, re-look it and fact check it. Okay, fact check it. Okay, but I'm pretty sure we won 2-0 that game, yeah? So, you know, you're thinking to yourself, all right, we're doing okay. Then we've got Brighton. Bright we lose 3-0, 3-0. Brighton outclassed us. Outplayed us, outbullied us, and then you've got some 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 of uh, our fan base saying, "Oh, you know, uh, we'd already lost it because uh, Man City had been had beaten Everton, so you know we didn't have the incentive." No, I don't agree with that. The incentive is always there when you're playing, yeah, or it should be. That's why I see it because when I used to play football. I wanted to win every single game. It didn't matter whether or not we could have won the league or not. I wanted to win the game. I wanted to score goals or I wanted to make assists because I was the right winger. Okay, back in the day, that's what it's called. Now, I hear a lot about the fact that we're a young team. So what? We're the youngest team in the league, but we've been the youngest team in the league all season. So, you know, the good goes with the bad. Piers Morgan, I don't really take too much stock in what Piers Morgan says. I mean, you know, he says some things which I agree with and some things which I think he's just, you know, he's just ridiculous. And I'm not gonna go here and, you know, elenk the ones which I agree with and I don't agree with. I just think, you know, at times he can be a little bit arrogant but he turned around and said, <coughs> excuse me, that we bottled it. I actually agree with him. I do think we bottled it because we can't have the league in our hands and then play West Ham and Southampton and draw against them. It's just, that's, that's just not on, to be totally honest, you know, you should have had, we should have had that hunger. We should have given it our all. We, it was ours to lose. And what did we do? I can't, I can't use any other words. I say we bottled it. Now, a lot of people are not gonna like what I'm saying. I don't care, it's how I see it. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. I don't think we're gonna get a better chance than this, yeah? To win the league, personally. Now, I spoke to some of my friends, okay? Arsenal fans, obviously. Where they turned around and said, oh, no, no, now we're in the Champions League, okay? Uh, you know, this is what we wanted. Now we can buy uh, a certain type of player, okay? Because players wouldn't come to us if we weren't in the Champions League. And I'm thinking to myself, it's a little bit hypocritical. Why? Because when we had Arsene Wenger and we were getting Champions League season in, season out, we had a portion of our fan base that were not happy with that. That would rather, okay, that, you know, we had kicked out Arsene Wenger and here we suffered for a few years to come back stronger. Well, they got their wish, yeah? They got their wish, and we have struggled since then. Now look, don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna turn around and say, you know, um, Arsene Wenger should have gone or shouldn't have gone. I just believe, and I've said this before, he should have gone out on his terms, okay? And maybe stepped up, and then basically, okay, still be part of the Arsenal setup. Now, 
over the last few seasons, um, I've also heard the same fan base turn around and say that they will take Arsene Wenger back. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I would have taken Arsene Wenger back, but if I was Arsene Wenger, I don't think I would have come back. Not after the way he was treated, okay? Social media, okay, for all the good it's done, it's also done bad because a lot of people come on, uh, you know, social media and everyone has a work, something to say and everyone thinks that they know better than the manager, uh, they know what players should be picked, so on and so forth. Me, myself included, because I'll be honest with you, the games against West Ham and the game against Southampton, personally, I would have put Zinchenko in Granit Xhaka's position and Kieran Tini at left back. And I think we would have been a lot more dangerous and a lot more attacking. But hey, what do I know? It's just my opinion. I'm not the manager of Arsenal Football Club. The only person that can take responsibility for his decisions is Arteta. Now, I'm not going to get on the bandwagon of Arteta out because he has improved our position. We have finished second. We are in the Champions League. Um, I was one that criticised him early on in the season. I actually stopped doing videos on Arsenal because I was being too negative. Um, but let's be honest. We do need a complete, complete turnaround of players. We need a clear out. We need to get rid of some players and bring other players in. Uh, I have to be honest, I saw what uh, Piers Morgan, his five players, and I'd agree with most of them, if not all five. You know, Declan Rice was in there. Uh, Ozyman was in there, okay, I can't remember all the others, okay, I probably can't pronounce their names more likely, which is why I won't uh, pronounce them, but just go and look at Piers Morgan's uh, opinion, okay, and his idea as to who he thinks we should bring in. Look, we need a clear out. We need players that will give 100% for 90 minutes of the game. We need players that do not give up. And we need players that do not bottle it. I'm sorry to say this. I mean, if you look at last season, yeah? We should have had top four last season. It was in our hands, top four last season, yeah? Okay, we should have been in the Champions League this season. What happened? We bottled it. And that's been happening for a few seasons now. We, we, we can go on a run, okay, all of a sudden, okay, you know, Arsenal this, Arsenal that. We've gone on a 10 game winning run, so on and so forth. And then we come crashing down. That is no way to play football. People talk about the team that uh, Man City have got. Man City have got two 11s. Okay, Man City have got more money than us to, to invest. Okay. But all that said, we were ahead. We were top of the league, okay? We were points ahead of Man City. And what we did is we blew it. We blew it. So don't talk to me about the money. Don't talk to me about, you know, the fact that they've got two teams, two 11s, okay? Because we were there, we had it in our hands. Now, I've heard a lot about the fact that we were missing Saliba. Uh, yes. Yes, I understand that. He's an integral part of our team. But that's what I'm talking about, team. Okay, now we put Holding in. Is he up to Saliba's level? No. But whose fault is that? Is that Holding's fault? Or is it our fault because we didn't get anyone in in case Saliba got injured? You know we suffer from injuries. You know Arsenal have a, a track record of injuries. So get the right players in. We obviously haven't. We've got Fabio Vieira, we've got Jorginho, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah, but they just didn't cut it for me, you know. And yeah, Emil Smith-Rowe, 
on the bench. He, he's, he's, he's been, you know, Emil Smith Rowe reminds me when Mesut Ozil wasn't playing. We were playing without a number 10. And then he comes in, all of a sudden, Emil Smith Rowe this, Emil Smith Rowe that, uh, against uh, Brian, he's on the bench again, you know, so, yeah. What is going on? Where is the problem? I've heard a lot of talk that next season we're going to challenge and uh, if it wasn't for Arsenal, uh, Man City would have won the league in March. Yeah, fine. But people aren't going to remember that. People only remember who wins the league. We threw it away. Man City, we gave it to Man City. I don't care what anyone says. We bottled it as far as I'm concerned. So, again, I go back to the question, was it a good or a bad season? At the beginning of the season, with what our expectations were, I'd say yes, it was a good season. But the position we was in and the fact that we blew it, it's a bad season. So I suppose, I suppose it depends on how you look at it. Anyway, look, I've got nothing else to say. Yeah, that's it for me. Let's look forward to next season and keep our fingers crossed, although I'm not too confident, I think is the word is, the word is, because I tell you something, Liverpool are going to strengthen. Man United are going to strengthen. Oops, hold on a second. Newcastle are going to strengthen and they're going to be a threat. They've done so well this season. Then you've got Brighton, who have been playing excellent football this season. They'll probably strengthen and they'll come strong next season as well. You know, Man City will be there, obviously. Um, it's going to be very, very, very difficult. I don't think we can take anything for granted. I think the teams that um, have not produced this season, especially the Man United, the Chelsea's, the Liverpool's, I believe they're going to come back stronger next season. So next season is going to be doubly hard. I honestly believe this was our chance, our best chance to win the league. And we didn't do it. We didn't do it. So anyway, looking forward to next season I think okay let's see how it goes Michelle I'm out